have seen the error of my ways. I am now a believer, following he who claims to be the way and the light. Born of a virgin in the last days of December, he who so loved the world that he sacrificed himself, if only temporarily, on our behalf. Yes, I am now a worshiper of Horus. Oh wait, my mistake, I meant Zoroaster, Ra, Krishna, Karna, Actis, Mithras, or Piscean. Because the story of Jesus, the situation behind his conception, and the celebrated time of his birth have been told many times throughout history. But you probably don't believe in any of those prophets because they have faded away into anonymity, despite their worshippers being just as arrogant as Christians, cocksure that their gods were the real ones with all evidence based solely on tradition, just like Christians. The reason Christianity spread through the Western world was due to Constantine's conversion and subsequent conquering of other pagan civilizations while continuing the Roman tradition of substituting pagan reasons for celebration with now Roman Christian ones. Just look up the history of Easter, or Christmas, or Ash Wednesday. It's not that Christianity is any more true than the belief in Greek, or Roman gods, or Zoroastrianism, or Hinduism, or Buddhism. It's that its believers had more military power. Truth is not bound by geography. But if you look at a map of religious concentrations, belief turns out to be. Steven Weinberg said that with or without religion, you would still have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. The argument that atrocities done in the, in the name of a religion is based on the perversion of its beliefs is fallacious, especially in the case of Christianity. Anyone who does so is employing the no true Scotsman fallacy, attempting to convince you that these men did not know God's will, but he alone does, when that cannot be true for two reasons. First, he has had no more interaction with his God than those who have committed the atrocities. And second, especially in the case of Christianity, there are many examples in the Bible of God-sanctioned massacres of enemies. For instance, in Psalms chapter 137 verse 9, when God says, Blessed is he who happily dashes babies against the rocks. Is this a perversion of Christianity? Or in Joshua chapter 6 verses 1 through 24, when God entreats Joshua to bring down the walls of Jericho, to kill all the men and women of any age, save the harlot Rahab in her household, to burn the town and kill the animals. Is this a perversion of Christianity? Or in Matthew chapter 10 verse 34, when Jesus says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Is this a perversion of Christianity? Or in Luke chapter 14 verse 26, when Jesus says that anyone who comes to him and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brother and sister, and also his own life cannot be a disciple of Christ. And if you consider the clergy and their scandals, or the Republicans and theirs, or your fellow churchgoers and theirs, ask yourself, is this a perversion or Christianity? And as far as the safety of belief, Pascal's wager says, isn't it better to believe in God and be wrong than not believe in God and be wrong? But in which God should I believe? There are thousands of gods worshipped around the world and thousands more worshipped throughout history. Even the Ten Commandments leaves open the possibility for the existence of other deities with the second commandment being, thou shalt have no other God before me. But I digress. Because common African-American wisdom tells me that it has to be the God of Christianity. But with over 3,000 splinters, which sect should I choose? With each believing that it alone has the correct interpretation of the Gospels. Christopher Hitchens said that the fact that all religions cannot be correct, the only safe assumption is that they must all be wrong. But perhaps you are not as familiar with modern atheist philosophers as myself, or do not hold them in such high regard, so I will put it in the terms of someone with whom you will be more familiar. Homer said, and that's Simpson, not the ancient Greek poet. Homer said, suppose we've chosen the wrong God. 
Every time we go to church, we're just making him matter and matter. Have you even considered other religions? Studied their traditions and rationally and logically dismissed their beliefs based on reason? Or have you simply done what most people do? Accepted the religion of your parents based on authority and tradition? To quote Stephen Roberts, I contend that we are both atheists. I simply take it one godfather. And when you understand why you've dismissed all other gods, you will understand why I dismiss yours. Rest in peace, Hitch.